Hi everyone, Kasia Zmokwa from Digital Art Classes here and today we are going to do something quite unusual. We will be exploring the concept of double exposure in Capture One. Okay, so as you have noticed, I quite enjoy working with Capture One. I enjoy a lot working with these super clean colors, getting this super polished professional look. However, I'm still quite nostalgic and when I get back to the Photoshop days, as you can see, here is my portfolio. And if we jump over to 2000, yes, 20 years ago, I was working a lot in Photoshop and I really enjoyed creating this sort of images. I was combining different exposures. I was focusing mostly on portraiture, so I really love this sort of work. Even as these images are super old, they are 20 years old now, I can't believe that. I really like this sort of effect. So I would be taking portraits and then I would either process them simply into a black and white look or I would combine them with different images. Typically this would be images, sort of textures, either feather, something really natural and organic, something that I could wrap around and create this sort of effect. So now I have decided to jump over to Capture One and see what can be done without leaving Capture One. I wanted to recreate this double exposure effect purely in Capture One without having Photoshop involved at all. So let me show you the layers so I can prove you that I'm not cheating. So if we take a look at this image first, you can see that we are still working with raw files. There is no Photoshop at all. And of course, I've done some luminosity adjustments. I've done some color grading. And here on this very layer, I have applied my double exposure effect. Similar work I've done to these two other images. I have applied some luminosity adjustments to this third image and I have applied my double exposure. So today we will be working with my middle image and we will try to recreate my double exposure effect. It's not complicated, it's going to be quite simple and I'm sure you will enjoy it. Okay, so you will need two things. You will need two images. First, you will need your image that you want to work with. And the most important thing is that you should already have all your luminosity levels in place. You should have all the adjustments that you like. And you should have ideally your color grading applied because the double exposure effect will be sort of finish touch on your image. And the second thing that you need to create your double exposure effect is the second photo. In this case, I have used this organic shape. I guess this is jellyfish. I have downloaded this image from stock ages ago. I haven't taken this picture. I just want to mention here that the ideal scenario would be to have a raw file for the texture layer. However, unfortunately, I don't have access to a raw file in this case. JPEG is more than enough. Okay, so let's jump right into the process of creating double exposure. So as the very first step, you want to take your texture file, the file that you will position on top of your portrait. And here you want to apply a mask. I'm going to be using the Luma mask feature in Capture One because it's going to be very fast and super helpful to create this sort of effect. In this case, this picture is quite contrasty. However, I will bump up contrast a little bit to make those lines even stronger. As you can see, the image is quite high res. I'm on a retina display and at 100% we can see plenty of beautiful detail. So you want to work with high resolution images. The bigger the image, the better. So let me just push the contrast a little bit just to get these lines really pop to make them really, really strong. So this is before and after applying the adjustment. And that's it. Now let's create new field adjustment layer. And here I will apply Luma mask. So let's hit the Luma range button. And here I want to create a mask that will give me only these white lines. So let's 
may be restrict the mask like that. Of course, with the button display mask, you can see the mask. This is super helpful. That way you can see what you are doing with this tool. So let's include more mid-tones. Let's push it further. I won't specifically have these fine lines included in my mask. I don't want any harsh transitions. But if I go softer here, I will have too much. Those lines will be getting too fat. So let's maybe go for something like this. We can extend the radius. And once we've done this, we can play around with sensitivity. So this will give us more precise mask. However, I think something about 50 here was fine. So let's see again. This is our mask. I think we can include still a little bit more. Of course, you can always get back and you can create another mask if it doesn't work. I think for the sake of this video, this sort of selection will work well. So with this tool, we have created Luma mask that includes highlights and bright mid-tones. So we are going to apply. So now having our mask created, we want to just copy it and place over the portrait. However, one important thing to remember here that if we copy the adjustments, we will copy all the adjustments that we have applied on this image. So remember that apart from adding the Luma mask before, we have added some contrast on the background layer. So now if I copy all these adjustments, I will apply all of them to my portrait. And I want to just apply the mask. I don't want to apply the contrast adjustments because I'm happy with the contrast as I have already in this image. So Capture One allows you to select which adjustments you want to copy. You just need to move over to the clipboard adjustments and here you can just check which adjustments are included. So you can see here that we have exposure, contrast and layers. So I don't want these adjustments to be applied at all. I just want to leave layers. So that way, if I hit apply, only my layer will be applied to the image. So let's just jump back to the exposure tab and here is my mask. So if I hit M, I will see the preview of my mask. Let's just get rid of this and let's just get back to the exposure tab. So this is our basis for the double exposure effect. Having our mask applied on a RAW file, now we can work with all the data that is still available in a RAW file and within the mask we can apply really nice changes, really nice adjustments. So what I've done in my image that you've seen at the beginning of this tutorial, I have first manipulated with color balance. So as you can see, the color temperature that I went for is quite cool. I'm working with this matte effect. So now to contrast these blues, I want to go for a bit warmer color. So let's maybe rename this layer. So this will be our jellyfish just to keep it tidy and organized so we see what we are doing. So let's first play with the color temperature. I'm going to use the white balance tool and if I move the slider towards the left hand side, I will be cooling down the image. So I'm adding more blue. If I move over towards the right, I will be making this layer warmer. It's not very strongly visible because we haven't applied other adjustments. So let's go for higher brightness. So let's say I will go for something about 20. So now we can go back to the white balance tool and we can continue experimenting. So this is zeroed out. This is the mask without cooling on warming up the color. So if I again move to the left, I will be cooling the mask. So you can just go for whatever matches your image, whatever matches your portrait. So in my case, I was quite happy with the warmer color. I wanted to create a color contrast between the nice teal background, those cool colors, and I wanted to add some of these fiery golden shades to my image. Maybe this is a little bit too much. Let's just push it back slightly. So we can see that in this super simple way, just working with white balance, we've been able to create this double exposure effect. 
you can work with these other options as well you can work with exposure it all depends on the mask that you have created and it depends on the raw file so basically if you would go for negative values you will get darker color which is quite interesting as well however the original image was already quite dark and I didn't want to darken it further if you would be working with contrast it will give you some cool effects as well if you go for a negative contrast you will be getting much softer effect and if you start pushing contrast slider to the right you will get more toned effect the mask will look as it is sort of blending with the existing shadows so it's all about experimenting it's all about trying different looks you can touch up the saturation slider as well remember that you are just working with a mask so we are with the jellyfish layer this is our mask and all we are doing we are manipulating with the colors that are in our raw file and we are just adjusting the mask area so if we go with saturation towards the left if we go for negative saturation we will be desaturating the image within the mask and if we go the opposite way if we push our saturation towards the right hand side we will be making all the colors that were existing in the raw file stronger so that way we will going for stronger saturation so that way really simply you can create this nice painterly effect let's now talk about restrictions because you might ask okay so we don't need photoshop anymore if we can do this sort of stuff in capture one and i would say yes and no the pros are that as you know really well we are working with the raw file so we have access to all the amazing data that was captured in our original raw file we can take advantage of all the data so what are the limitations basically in capture one once you place your mask basically that's it you can't rotate it you can't scale it you can move it around though you can reposition it so to reposition your mask just make sure that your mask layer is highlighted move over to the layers and make sure that this option is selected display selection points so when this is on you need to have your brush selected this is very important so let's hit b and now if i select my control point i can move the mask around so this is what you can do in capture one you can't unfortunately rotate the mask you can't scale it but if you want you can try to reposition it so creating this sort of double exposure effect in capture one is definitely very rewarding it's a lot of fun it's very pleasant however it is a lot of trial and error so don't be impatient don't think that i got this effect in five minutes no not really i spent many hours picking searching for the right textures searching for the right images preparing my portraits and then trying to match texture with the portrait because in photoshop you could rotate the texture layer you could adjust it and that way you have much more control here you can't here you just copy you create your mask you copy your mask you place it over the portrait and either you are lucky and it works or it simply doesn't and you are back to square one and having said all that i want to encourage you to go for the creative route i want to encourage you to experiment anyone who is efficient in capture one can create these nice clean colors polished looks but taking the extra effort taking the extra step and experimenting not being afraid of failure because there is a lot of fails on the way can lead you to this sort of effects and as you've seen at the very beginning of this video when i was looking at my images that are 20 years old i'm not proud of their technical efficiency they are not technically perfect 
but I still enjoy looking at the ideas that I had back then and that's why I wanted to work that way in Capture One and to bring this creative spark into my photography editing process. So that's it for now. Thanks for watching. This was Kasia Zmokwa from Digital Art Classes.